Today, Pete Sampras, a young American with lots of potential. Right now, for more of the pre-match setup, let's go to Ted Robinson, Barry McKay, and Vitas Carolinas. Gentlemen? Well, Bruce, it's, uh, I guess you could say it's perfect. Now, why does Yvonne have that Legionnaire's hat on again, though? My goodness. Good enough for a nicer day to play. I guess that's, uh, I don't know, everybody used to have quirks. I really have not spoken to Yvonne about that. Uh, if, he, if he gets past this round, I definitely will ask him that question because he's never, ever worn a hat. Yeah. I, I know that a lot of guys do have superstitions, maybe after the first round, but he, he, he is one of the few players that I think superstition-wise has fewer quirks than others. Yeah. He's a lot more technical. I mean, you know, he changes those rackets every uh, ball change, but I think he's wearing the hat definitely because uh, he's gotten used to it. And yeah. It seems to work and for him. It obviously hasn't hurt him. It has nothing to do with the weather today, that's for sure. Well, this for Lendl has become routine. For Pete Sampras, it's a new experience, and we'll discuss it with David Wheaton tonight. What runs through a Pete Sampras' mind now, just casually hitting and loosening up with a Lendl before a big match like this. The little bit I've watched Sampras play this year, Ted, in big match situations, he seems very unaffected by the, the, the occasion, if you will. Uh, he's a guy that loves to play big occasion matches. He has won uh, on a couple of occasions in the finals, and so uh, as we get down to the later rounds of a tournament, I think Pete Sampras, one of the calmer guys uh, on the circuit for an untested, unknown kind of player. I mean, I, I think he handles these kind of situations very well. Now, Lendl has moved through the draw again fairly easily in his last match. A straight set win over Gilad Bloom of Israel. Match point in a 7 6, or excuse me, in a 6 love, 6 3, 6 4 win. Losing only seven games. Lendl's lost only one set. That was to Michael Stieck in the second round. Tough player. He won that tournament. Michael Stieck did down in Memphis, which we did earlier this year. And uh, he is a guy that everybody's going to hear a lot more about uh, in the future, the German Michael Stieck. But is he, has Lendl met a player like Sampras yet in the draw? I would have to think not. Not really. I mean, Sampras can do it all. He, he's an a all-round type player. Everybody says Pete Sampras serve in volley, but, but to me, he's an all-round type player. Uh, when we go to the strengths and weaknesses, one of the things that uh, I talked about is this kid plays the kind of game that you have to play to beat Yvonne Lendl. He has all the shots. He's got a big serve. He likes to attack, uh, even though Lendl has faced a million attacking players in his day, still that is not his favorite type of player to play. The only question is, can he go five sets against a, uh, against an Yvonne Lendl? Forget if you're going five sets with anybody else. That's, mm -hmm. that's irrelevant. Finals of going slant, five right? sets with Lendl is like uh, <laughs> 22 sets with any other human being. But I will say one thing. Sampras did show some stamina in the Munster oh, no. match. No, no question about that it. He, oh, he's, uh, he's mm -hmm. in great shape. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting set. 19-year-old Pete Sampras in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open against Yvonne Lendl. It comes your way on USA in a moment. Nice oh, afternoon at the National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows. The sun right now is ducked behind a thin layer of clouds and the temperature is very seasonable. And it's a coming out party for Pete Sampras, who just turned 19 last month. And like David Wheaton, who we will see tonight, like Jim Courier, a young American whose progress in the tennis world this past year has been quick. Even though he hasn't made the headlines that some of his peers made at an earlier age, the feeling is Pete Sampras is going to be around for a long time. Yeah, he's got a great game, barring any kind of injury. Uh, Pete Sampras hits the ball clean. He's got good balance. Uh, he's not a very big kid. I mean, he's not short by any standard, but I'm saying he's not very stocky or uh, his balance is very good, and that's where the injuries come in. If Sampras serves, in this match, the way he served against Tomas Muster in his last match, does that 
improve and give him a legitimate chance to beat London? Well, does the serve hurt Lendl is what I'm saying? Uh, serve hurts everybody. I mean, you know, if you can throw an aces, you know, it's going to hurt. I know what you're but saying. But can Lendl return his good I think serve? He, he will return much better than Muster because he's, he stands up closer to the line. He's faced, you know, big serves consistently. He's played on this kind of court 20 times more than Muster has. Okay? And he can adapt better than Muster can. But in my opinion, Ted, the only way Sampras is going to beat Lendl is to play him the way McEnroe used to play him, and that is to come in behind a lot of balls, second serves, take some chances. He's got to keep pressing. He can't get in rallies with Yvonne Lendl in this match time after time after time. He can do it occasionally, but not all the time. I, I totally agree there. Lendl, Lendl we may see come up to net a lot more today also if things don't go his way. Because, you know, once again, we talked about his adaptability. And if, right, if right. to keep Sampras away from the net, there's only one other way of doing it. You've got to come to net. And Sampras has started this match exactly like he started every other match. He likes to go for that big one right up the middle. Yeah. The other thing about Sampras' service delivery is that it's so smooth that I don't think it wears him down in a long match. It's a real no. easily delivered ball, and so therefore it's not going to take a lot out of him uh, in a long match, which this could turn out And to at be. 18, not a whole lot takes a whole lot out of him. <laughs> I, I forget. I, I, so have I. <laughs> and the hat's gone. So we know he's not superstitious. <laughs> That's the way Lendl usually starts most of his matches off. So we've seen the two styles right off the bat. You know, why is it these days people live in Greenwich, they live in Monte Carlo, Saint Tropez? Because they're what? making more money. Well, we uh, played Vita, uh, Cincinnati, St. Louis, you know, those hard kind of yeah, towns. <laughs> but this is where they live, not Power where they Beach. play. <laughs> this is where they live, not where they play. Or in some cases, where they pay taxes. <laughs> yes. Or don't pay. Or don't pay. I think that's a better, <laughs> word of, a better way of putting it. Plus, it happens to be pretty nice up in Greenwich. First few games, as we've said often, of any match kind of set the tone here, and I think Sampras needs to hold, get into this match Especially right away. Especially against a guy like Lendl. It would really help to hold serve and maybe even sneak in an early break when Lendl is trying to get his range. Because that's the only problem we've seen with Lendl so far in this tournament. He's been real good. But it's taken him a little while to find the range of the first couple of games. He's been a little long on the forehand. But it doesn't take this, uh, uh, this guy, Yvonne Definitely. Lendl, the human machine, too long to find the range. But the weather today, I think, favors Pete Sampras, if you're going to try to look for, for things favoring this kid. Uh, it's cool. It's a little breezy. A little tougher to grind down a player like that. Lendl likes it hot. Here is that nice smooth motion we talked about earlier. The racket, both arms come up together. Now watch him make contact right at the top of the toss. And that big high toss and a nice tall guy who can get his weight into it quickly. Sampras has the fastest serve to date in this championship that we clocked 122 miles an hour. That ace was 118. This year's Open, we've seen a lot of servers in the 1 to 110 category. Ooh. Hopefully those two double faults are not an indication of how he feels starting off this match. And Barry, you know what it's like to get down there. I mean, it, it, it can be a awe-inspiring sight to see this many people and then the one of the best players ever in the game on the other side. And I think it's tough for Vitas to serve the first game. I, I, I'm sure that uh, Lendl elected to receive. I, I think the pressure is all on Sampras to get into the match and so I think this is a real tough game for him.
that's a good move. Notice something right off the bat today against Sampras. That low backhand volley. You notice how much more carefully he played that today than the other night? He was playing a lot of casual volleys the night before. That one seemed very deliberate in keeping the ball deep. Looks like he's having a little bit of trouble with his footwork. He slipped on that last volley, and on that first volley, he kind of hesitated a, a bit. Well, you know, he also knows that he's got to keep the ball deep. He's got to punch the ball solid against Yvonne Lindell. He's, he can't get away with just average volleys that he can against three quarters of the other players because he covers the net so well and serves so well. He's already picked up three service aces, and this is game number one of a best of five set match. You can see some, perhaps some serving records broken out here <laughs> in this match. Today, I don't think he's going to be worried about three-quarter spin serves and getting tight to the net. You know, unless drastic things happen in the match and he wants to change strategy, he's going to come out firing. There it is. Yeah. Now, a bit of a struggle, but Sampras holds his serve to begin the match. Back on stadium court, the first men's quarterfinal and Pete Sampras held his serve to begin the match now receives from Lundell Service records in at that rate. That's one game. <laughs> well, this is best of five. I think most people feel this could go more than three sets for sure with these talented players we're watching. Wendell checking his toss there. It's not too windy out there, and there's no sun. I always like playing on a day like today. It's overcast. You don't have to worry about the sun. But yet it's deceptive on a day like today. There is a breeze, and on days like that when it's not wind blowing in one direction, it's very tricky out there on center court. I used to find it very difficult to play out on this court on this kind of day because the wind's swirling around. You can't really tell what direction it's coming from. So one time you'll play a lob that, you know, will land five feet in. Next time you play the exact same shot, and you miss it by three yards. now about which ball he's playing with They're using six he's trying to find just the right ball for that first serve did first ace he found it 14 15 that, I think Lendl's going to throw in a couple aces himself in this match came in on a very sort of shaky approach shot had to commit himself well I think he's planting the seed in Lendl's mind already that he's going to be coming into net a lot and uh, that you're not going to see me spending too much time on the baseline that time the approach obviously was way too short but just psychologically you thinking about it we're only in the first set gets to a fourth or fifth set that shot might look pretty tough Ooh. to pass Well, that shows you some of the 
diversity that Lendl has added to his game over the last five years. We, we've seen that great forehand before, but instead of the big passing shot, he just comes right around the ball. That's a very tough shot to handle. He would have either, as you say, Vitas, three or four years ago, he would have tried for a winner up the line with or a lob spin it. or lob the ball, exactly. That's a great addition to his game because it keeps that guy at net very honest. Plus oh, also, if the guy gets it, it's low. It's a difficult shot to volley. And it, Lendl can get right back into the court and start the point all over again. Three double faults already for Sampras. Ooh. We said that Sampras would like to get off to an early lead, but I don't know many players that wouldn't like to get off to an early lead. I think Lennel is just as eager to get a good start against this kid and uh, just lay the law down here on, on stadium court. Eleven times this year, Lendl has lost the first set of a match. Does that surprise either of you? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I, I was surprised when, when I heard that, Ted, because uh, he usually is very solid. He warms up well, and yet, Vitas, you said he takes some chances early in the first set. It surprised set. me that uh, that Ted brought up the stat that, you know, 11 sets, he lost, you know, first sets, first 11 sets. Uh, I'm not surprised that he starts off slow, because I remember he was one of the few players that I actually, as well as he returns, I used to like serving first against him. Because he would take a lot of chances the first couple of service games. Here comes the Sampras serve and volley. Good motion now. He comes in quickly. A couple of big strides. Gets caught there. Good return from Lendl. But look at those two shots right there. He, two big steps put him about six feet from the Pulled net. Pulled off a tough point there because he really shouldn't get caught where he was on the first volley. That's... That was because Lendl hit a pretty good return. That's no man's land. If you're stuck behind the service line, your percentage is not going to be very high of winning points. Game seven. No Sampras holds. We're on serve in the first set. Three unseated. And this is the first quarterfinal matchup. Now we're down to the, the, this is the money field right here. This is where we separate the men from the boys. Don't you think we've already done that to a degree? <laughs> Well, I don't think a lot of players play their best tennis early on, first couple rounds. But from now on, the only thing that could affect your tennis here now is just the sheer pressure that knowing that you actually have a shot of winning the U.S. Open. But, I mean, most of the guys are bringing their best game here to the quarterfinals. There may have been a little bit of luck getting into the, getting to the quarters, but a lot of good tennis play. And from now on, everybody's going to say a little prayer in the evening that, you know, may I get a few lead cords and this and that. But you, you brought your best game up to the quarters. From now on, it's only two matches. Well, this is our first quarterfinal match. The That's second good. will be at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific Live. You'll see it exclusively on USA. John McEnroe against David Wheaton. You being a great baseball commentator, would you call that a great doubleheader? That is a day-night doubleheader. Thank you for the quick turn. that Lendl's lost the first set of a match 11 times this year. To put that in perspective, he's only lost six matches all year long. That's why that number seemed a little bit higher than you would normally expect. Yeah, he just likes to find his range early. Other guys seem to take a little bit longer. Uh, Macron's a quick starter. You know, he gets a lot of balls down and play low, but his swing's a little bit shorter. You know, uh, he just plays a totally different style. Connors is a quick starter, a little bit more compact game. But Lendl takes a pretty good cut at all the balls, so it takes him uh, maybe three or four games to really find the range. And now it's two all on the first set. Great forehand for Yvonne Lendl in the strength category, physical condition, one of the best here at the U.S. Open. 
uh, he's made this his home. He's played some of his best matches here at the U.S. Open. If he has a weakness, and you know we're pulling for straws there, he uh, it does not feel that comfortable at the net. But Tony Roach has improved that on 200% in the last five or six years. So if, if it, it comes down to it, where he has to start attacking Sampras, he's capable of doing it. It's amazing about. We look at Tony Roach. What's amazing about the notoriety that Lendl gets for not winning Wimbledon is it isn't as if he doesn't win there. I mean, the guy's in the semis, the finals almost every year. I built my reputation on one match in the semifinals <laughs> of Wimbledon, and that guy's there every year in the semis, and he gets no credit at all for it. It's funny. Who's that guy you played? I think his name was right, Borg. So let's it? forget about it, okay? <laughs> Remind me another time. <laughs> Pete Sampras, we've mentioned his big serve and volley. Very similar style to Lendl, and uh, I think it's going to tie in well to play against Lendl, but we've also said that uh, he does have lapses in concentration where he'll go off not just for a few points, but for a few games. And in the quarterfinals at the U.S. Open, you cannot afford any lapses of concentration, especially against Yvonne Lendl. Sampras getting down really low to the volley, and Lendl still hasn't found the range and the height and depth on his backhand. That was way too high up for a passing shot. Oh, that's a good serve. But the conditions are pretty breezy. It's not that easy playing out there today, Barry. And this is, not, up. this is not an easy serve to pick because the motion is basically the same for both the serve that he swings out wide and for that flat one that he just hit that ace with. Very similar motion. Same thing again. Only two in a row. And I don't think Wendell saw either one. Three, two, Sampras. Well, if you like horse racing, I think this is kind of like the the horse is coming around the turn into the stretch. I love that guy that calls them. They're in the stretch. That's where we are. of start on Lendl's serve. Oh. Sampras gave it a sarcastic gesture. Like, why didn't I hit it up the line? which actually is a good question. But uh, here he decides, he's figuring that Lendl's gonna go the other way, but Lendl had committed him so far to that side that almost he was giving the point away. Because we know that going behind the player is a good play. A lot of people have trouble running back, going back after the same shot. There are Yvonne's parents, the Lendels, who always seem to show up at the U.S. Open. They, they have watched him through the years here win an awful lot of tennis matches. It runs in the family genes. Uh, Yvonne likes it here. The parents like it here. What a nice... His family loves it here. Well, what a nice change in their, their lives. Baby. They can come here. That's right, first time that they've come here leaving a free country. Oh. Lots of things have changed. How would you like to be a Russian playing for the first time when you can keep a little change in your pocket? <laughs> Don't you think the incentive goes up a little bit?
not just blue jeans anymore, right? That's right. I remember when Alex Petrovelli used to ask me to spring back a bunch of jeans and uh, American records to Russia when we would come play there for exhibitions. Now he just asked for checks. Sorry, Alex, you ain't getting it. his back end up now. Sampras comes from way back in the court though. I thought he might have taken a ball that was pretty deep to try and come in on. Watch it from another angle here. He kind of sweeps over the ball, but look how far back he is. Way too far back. That was a point that Poncho Segura mentioned the other day. One thing that he, and he thinks this kid's one of the most talented tennis players along with Alan King. Although Alan's just one of the more the older talented players in the game. Segura just felt that Sampras approaches sometimes from too far behind the service line. At that time, he was at the baseline when he approached. Now, you, the percentages, we don't have them on uh, Lendl hitting passing shots from a guy uh, approaching from the baseline, but I can guarantee you they're not very high. Sampras looked over at the spot where he hit that volley from. He's thinking to himself, should I have let it drop? It looked like it might have been slightly wide, but those are the kind of Vitas you can't. No, you got to play them, especially when you're a guy that serves in volleys like that. I mean, you, you were a serving volleyer myself. I mean, you play those balls when, when it's a, maybe a hair difference. You just got to play them. And it keeps you thinking aggressive. You know, if you're going to start thinking, let's drop balls and hope that they go out, that's no way. that's not a way to go into this kind of match. I mean, we, he, he can't sit here expecting that Lindell's going to miss every ball and where he's going to get the uh, berth into the semifinals. He knows he's got to win this match. And he's come out firing. Sampras was born in Maryland, and his parents moved to California. Tracy Austin was mentioning to the same club she played at in Rancho Palos Verdes at age 10 so that he could concentrate on a tennis career, but his parents are not real involved in the game, which many feel has been good for Pete. They're very laid-back parents. In fact, his mother, who's from Greece, doesn't even know the rules of tennis. I think that's a, <laughs> I think that's a blessing. I mean, my mom came to one match in my whole career, and I lost it, and then obviously she never came back to another one. And uh, looking back in retrospect, I thought my dad's a tennis fanatic. He's been a pro here at the uh, U.S. Tennis Center for a very long time, and if you've ever met a, te a tennis fan, Mr. G's, uh, he's the under the description in the dictionary. But compared to some of the parents that I see out there now. He was one of the most laid-back dads. So God bless that I had a father like that, because I wouldn't have gotten as far as I did in tennis if it wasn't for him. Missed that backhand. These players have met once as we look at Sampras's coach, Joe Brandy. Joe Brandy, who worked for Mr. Hobman for a while. I remember playing a couple of double sets with Joe Brandy, getting ready for the Briggs Martina Shriver match. Obviously, I should have picked a better partner to practice with. And then, uh, 
or to his opponents, and he now he then worked at the Baltieri camp for quite a long time. I don't know if he's still affiliated with them, but he wears the Baltieri T-shirt every now and then. So I still think there's an affiliation there, and he's done a great job with Pete Sampras. They get along well. down from the MetLife blimp on the stadium court. You can put your tennis court on a lazy Susan and just kind of spin it around the kitchen table. That's kind of what it would look like. Samantha Lendl. She's logged a few hours watching tennis matches through the years. Marika is their daughter, less than a year. Yvonne does not like the blimp. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. We, we've solved the airplane problem. And now uh, the blimps are starting to bother some of the players. That is a little much, I think. I'll sympathize to a point, but I ain't going to no, sympathize no. about the blimp. That's, I mean, that's, that's for sure. That's you, know, a much. you know what he's saying? He's checking his toss. And what he's saying is that when he throws the ball up, the blimp is, is, is affecting. It's like the sun up there, but it's a very. Well, what did you think a jumbo looked like overhead? <laughs> I mean, he's going a little faster, the... though. <laughs> One of his passions, of course, is hockey. He's on the board of directors of the Hartford Whalers Hockey Club, and he has donned the goaltending equipment at times and faced pucks slapped at him at about 100 miles an hour. Now, how you can do that and then be bothered by a blimp whirring overhead as you're serving, I'm not <laughs> sure I see that. Sampras had only five double faults in his entire match, a long four-setter with Tomas Muster. He's had four double faults in the first set here. Well-placed volley by Sampras. There, he's trying to get that volley in, and he places it nicely with the forehand. And there is, once again, our oldest, most talented player here at the U.S. Open. And did you, mention, you mentioned Venus, what a great player he was. Uh, uh, I've heard rumors that his forehand is vastly improved from last year. And Who, Sampras is or Alan no, King's? Alan King's. <laughs> and, of course, everything's relative, and so I'm sure uh, it still has a, way, a way to go. That's a key word there, relative. on his serves pretty tough in this first set no break points yet oh, that's a great return very low catches Sampras coming in 40, on this return Yvonne Lendl just uses the pace of the Sampras serve watch the way he blocks it now this kind of comes underneath the ball excellent return of serve from and if you noticed that slight little change of grip from uh, a, a semi backhand to the real backhand grip, which helped him chip and then go through the ball a little bit more when he wants to put more top on it, so he adds more backhand grip. Here's a shot of Sampras coming into net, tries to topspin lob, good athletic ability, and generally 
you got to do a little bit better. If there's any way to avoid, everybody loves to try to do that shot, but if there's any way to avoid hitting a backhand overhead, Barry, I think you'll agree. Take it on the forehand side. I don't care how good your backhand overhead is. I mean, sometimes you don't have the option. Also, Vitas, we talked earlier about hitting the ball behind the player. That was a great example of Lendl just waiting for Sampras to make his move. He knew he had him, waited for him to move, and then hit it behind him. And again, that has a lot to do with it. I've harped on it all week long, but I hope everybody has this in their memory banks for the rest of the tennis year. Get that racket back early. That'll give you the time to hit behind or across court the player. Point by both players. And we stay on serve. 5-4 Sampras. This is why Pete Sampras is dangerous. Look at the reflexes there. Quick hands, knocks it off, and then right here, Lindell makes a great get, but Sampras with the drop volley. He can do it all. This is for... This is for both the hackers and professionals watching back at home to take a good look at the early preparation of Lindell's forehand, the way he stays down on the ball. Now watch, he's got a modified backhand grip. Now goes to the full backhand grip when he throws up the lob. And now he's getting ready for the uh, for the smash that Sam presented up winning. You can actually see him twice there, kind of get the feel for where his hand was on the racket. He spread the fingers as he moved that made made that move on the backhand grip. One thing we have not seen him do, Vitas, on the return of serve is try and take it and keep pressure on Lindell for one solid game. He's gone in a couple times, gotten passed, but I think that's his play on Lindell's serve if he can keep it up. Yeah, I, I think any type of success against Lindell, even though uh, when I played him, you know, I'd never played the full, complete Lindell that he is now. But still, even when McEnroe was beating him five, six years ago, you know, we're talking about he was coming in on the kitchen sink. You're right. I mean, nonstop pressure. There you go. There it is. You cannot afford to be gun shy against Yvonne Lendl because you know you're playing to a strength in his passing shot, but if your strength is at the net, and there's without well, he set that up with a really good approach shot that time. That was right down the line, great pace. But once in a while, you can't be afraid to come in on something that's, you know, on a 15-30 point that might scare him a little bit, worry him at least. Oh. No. And the toughest thing for Sampras is to, is to keep coming when after you've been passed a couple times. Well, you know, I, I don't know Pete Sampras very well. I know his coach much better, mm -hmm. but I'm sure knowing his coach, he has taught him one lesson is there's another shot of Joe Brandy is you've been passed one, two, three, four times. That means nothing. So is John McEnroe. So is Vitas Gerolaitis. So is Tony Roach. So is anybody that's played a serve and volley game. I mean, we've been passed 100 times, but it's if, if you've got to win 200 points and a guy only passes you 109, 199 times, you get the trophy at the end of the match. 40-30. Very close. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh. oh, watch the, out. This oh, line, Lionel's not going to be happy with that. The lines person was blinded, and the chair umpire made the call. Is that the only call, red call there was 
Listen. Let's listen. You're totally wrong. They were in the spot. The line, the line person made a very clear signal. He was blinded by Sampras, to, and the call was made by the umpire. And that is his job if that happens. He's got to jump in and make the call. That's the side linesman who was unsighted, as they say. That's the correct way to do it. Stephen Winyard made no no uh, hesitation. Give him was thumbs up for that play. I would I would never have argued with that. Unless I'd hit better a good than... passing shot, though. <laughs> I, then I might have thought about it. But... It's better than no, guessing, that's... right? No, no, that's right. So you don't that's, that's, that's the professional way of doing it. Ace number three for Yvonne, out wide. I may not have been very happy with it. Lindell may not have been very happy with it, but we'd much rather have that type of reaction to being blinded than taking a guess and making a mistake. That's what they say in the rule book. And that's why, as someone who has had a lot of problems with referees in the past, the officiating has really improved 100%. No, I, I got to agree with that one. That one was wide. Let me take a look at it, but that was wide. No question about it. You know, as someone who, who has had his disagreements, I, I'm glad I have a chance to, to tell the referees that they've improved 100%. But boy, it takes a lot of the fun out of the game. I used to know if half the fun was going out there and starting a little something, even if things were going right. You used to have a lot of fun with the, the ladies and the men on sure. the ground. I'm sure they all shared your idea of fun, too, Vetus. <laughs> Deuce at 4-5 in the first set. Vetus, oh! when I used to play, we were lucky to have anybody on the lines to start <laughs> right. with. They used yeah, to see, start, you didn't have all the fun that I had. used to start the matches. Hey, Charlie, come on out and give us a hand here, will you? Yeah, I guess I could call a few lines. crowd obviously pulling for Pete Sampras at this point in the match. They would love to see this match get tight. The big point now that will age a young man very quickly. The one chance you get to knock through against a big player. And it may age Yvonne Lendl for a few minutes too. Long. It looked like he was lining up on that second serve to try and come in behind the ball, but Lindell hit a good deep second serve. You're going to line up and you're surprised by a deep serve. Why try to hit the return so fine? I mean, there's a very good chance Lindell's not going to come to the net. But when you're surprised like that, you obviously your options are a little bit limited, so it's not that easy to play the ball. enjoying himself knowing that he doesn't have to play today he's got a pretty good match tomorrow but against... he won't be quite that happy tomorrow uh, he'll be a little more serious played a good match yesterday against Amos Mansdorf it's a great return and instinctively after the serve he makes a good return, good early preparation. And as soon as he noticed that he hit a good return, watch him. Takes a sprint right to the net. Yeah. A la Bob Hayes, man. He just gets running right in there. And uh, he didn't have an opportunity to play the volley, but he would have been ready.
to Sampras. Set point here now for Sampras and watch the shot that Lendl goes for on the full run up the line tries to bring it in that's his bread and butter shot it did not work for him that time clearly wide he hit it solidly but shows you that he, he I think he's got a healthy respect for this kid absolutely this place went crazy after that last point you've seen him make that shot 99 out of 100 times because Sampras gave him a lot of room up that line And Sampras serves to begin the second set. Oh! 15. These players have met once before. It was February of this year. Indoors in Milan, Sampras won the first set. Lendl then won Love and Three. two ways we can interpret that. I think he's playing it a little bit differently than he did in Milan. I bet you in Milan he won the first set. He stayed back and said, well, I've got a set. You know, maybe the Lendl's going to crack. I think he's changed his way of thinking now. He's going to attack. He's going to turn the burners on now. Make the passing shot even tougher. <laughs> mistake or no mistake, keep the pressure on. You've got a set against a player who's obviously got a fantastic record here, but he's a little shaken right now. He has not, he did not play that bad of a first set. Will Chamberlain, who virtually has lived out here for the last eight or nine days, he has been to a lot of tennis Except matches. I think it's the first men's match that he's seen. He obviously must like one of these guys. Oh, yes. Wilt did not miss one single volley in the uh, Sabatini match last night. He hasn't missed too many volleys of any woman's match, if I can remember correctly, but I might be mistaken by one match or so. 30 all. Glad I get along with Wilt because it uh, could be early into my career. Sampras thus far is living up to your expectations for him, both of you. He's charging net. He's been in over 30 times already. And I'm going to see that I think I figured it'll double, maybe even triple by the end of this match. That's just solid volleying. And the game. So Pete Sampras, 19 years of age, a set over Lendl. Sampras is underrated and so Gomez who ended up winning the French championships has a lot of healthy respect for Pete Sampras. Sampras did not adopt the serve and volley game until age 16. And that clearly slowed his development comparison in comparison to Agassi or Chang. a servant volleyer there are so many more variations that comes into the game you never get the same type of volley you're always lunging great shot here of him picking that ball up early approaching now you see he's got to set himself up to watch that he doesn't get passed down the line not a very good lob by Lendl but when you learn the ground stroke game you're basically a machine from the baseline and there's very little variation other than you're going to hit cross court or down the line on your passing shot when you're up at the net it's almost like being a Rudolph Murray of lunging and, you know, fencing at the net. And you have to have a natural feel for that. The only one that ever developed at a very young age was John McEnroe when he hit that semifinals of Wimbledon so early for being a, a pure server volleyer. But all the other Australians took a little bit longer. 77 that year, McEnroe went over there before he entered Stanford. Nobody had heard much about John McEnroe. All of a sudden, he goes through the qualifying and into the semifinals to lose to Connors. Oh, 
How'd you like to manage that account, Barry? <laughs> Fantastic prize money, over 16 million. You could do pretty good just managing the titles. <laughs> That's all right, even though he gets nailed a couple times coming in, I think he ought to continue to keep that pressure on, Vitas. Good slice approach there. Well, just watch any of the good players here that are serving volleyers. I mean, they don't come up and win every point up at the net. You know, McEnroe comes in, and as long as it, at the end of the uh, day he's in the winning bracket of winners at the net, you know, he'll come home a happy man. Same thing with guys like Whedon. Fourth ace for Lendl. And it's one all now in the second set. One one. That's where a little experience comes into play. There, I think Samper's over hit that backhand a little bit, uh, Barry. Instead of trying to make Glendale play the volley, which we know he's not always that comfortable about doing, just kind of play it down the line. Let him hit a few volleys. Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, and then what happens if he misses a couple volleys? Then it kind of shakes his confidence to come in a little bit later. I mean, maybe we're asking too much of this eight-year-old kid right now, but that's that's something to be considered. We saw the 16 million number plus Yvonne Lindell's career prize money. Some very good prize money here at the U.S. Open. The winner of this tournament will take home $350,000, Ted. That's a lot of prize money for any major championship. But just out here today, whoever loses this match will still receive 45,000 plus as a quarter finalist. The semifinals, the, the least you can take home, 87. So they're playing for about a $42,000 difference right now. It may not be as important to Yvonne Lindell as Pete Sampras, but believe me, I think it's important to both these guys. Well, but Barry, I don't know. I, I didn't play in the era of this kind of prize money, but we played for some pretty big dough back in the days of Borg and McEnroe and uh, Lent, well, McEnroe still playing uh, and uh, Connors and. I don't think we ever, ever thought about the prize money coming into a match. I don't think he, athletes in any sport, when you get to a championship, you may think about it in a regular tour event, but do you really think about it at a major championship? I would never think of the difference that this is 47 to, you know, to 83. Yeah. Uh, he's up to 584, I can't even count that high anymore, 584,603 dollars <laughs> and 22 cents. And uh, it's the title, really, that puts all the pressure on you because this is chicken feed compared to what this kid's going to make if he would win exactly. the U.S. Open. Just for using rackets and putting uh, patches on his shirts and wearing shoes and make that. Just for walking into a store and spending half an hour at a uh, sports department. That's, that's, just... that's why there's about... F that's why there's about 52 agents sitting courtside today. Second serve at 30-15. Well, I know, I know that Ivan's trying to think of riding out the storm. And uh, he's going to have a ways to go because this kid is splitting the lines on approach shots. He's really been accurate, Barry, with those approach shots. Very close, very hardly hit, firm. And that made it tough for Lindell to get around that ball to pass him. Lindell has had only one break point thus far in the match. 
Sampras has held his own on serve. And also, as the match goes on, I think Lendl's not going to try to be quite as accurate with his passing shots, Barry. I don't know if you agree with me or not. I think he's he's going to take a little bit off and let Sampras start playing a lot more volleys and not give him those high ones, try to keep him dipped a little bit lower, try to be a little bit more, not cautious, but just make him work a little bit harder. He's uh, Sampras either had a duck return or Lindell's had hit a clean winner. He hasn't Same really been giving him the working over. It's 2-1 Sampras on serve in the second. It is 2-1. In 4 set, complicandosi inutilmente la vita perché il primo set l'ha perso sciupando 3 set point. 15-0 intanto. Era 6-3 nel tie break del primo set Sampras e lo ha perso per 8 punti a 6. Beginning at 7.30 Eastern Time on USA, it will be John McEnroe and David Wheaton, more quarterfinal action. Back to stadium court, Ted Robinson, Barry McKay, Vitas Carolitis. And it's 15 love here. Two series looking faces in that McEnroe Wheaton graphic. <laughs> guys are ready for war. Send them to the Middle East. Well, we're on serve here in the second set. One with 30 love. Linda looks up at a rare jet. The Jets have definitely stayed away this year. The forehand now of Yvonne Lendl takes the racket back in plenty of time, comes through the ball, but he doesn't get over that one. He gets over it at the very end of the follow through, but when he made contact with that ball, that racket was really moving into it. The ball went about 10 feet over the baseline. And I think he just lifted a little bit higher. I think he likes to drive through the ball a little bit more, also. Open men's quarterfinals. Earlier today, Steffi Graf and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario have gotten to the women's semis. The men's quarter starting, and Pete Sampras has won the first set from Yvonne Lendl. Tonight, McEnroe and Wheaton, 7:30 Eastern. Game yeah. ended. And now it's two all in the second set. From a strategic standpoint, what can Lendl do now to try and make a dent on Sampras' serve? I don't think he can do a whole lot different except for maybe a couple of things. He could try and take a little pace off the serve. Sampras is kind of in a groove. He's, he's letting Lendl just make the pace and he's staying back quite a bit. He might want to try and hit some more angles, draw him out wide, but uh, other than that, I think uh, Sampras is doing pretty well on his own serve. Well, the main thing, I think he's just going to try to get a few more serves back to begin the point, number one. I think he's, he's going to get a little bit sharper as the match goes on, Yvonne. We said he's a little bit of a slow starter. And uh, the more and more first serves that he gets back against Sampras, the more and more chances he'll have to break. So that's one of the best points right there. The Lindos played defensively. He stretched and did everything he could possibly do. Watch it now, because Lindo really covers a lot of court here. Good shot. Catches Sampras with the half volley. Hits a good shot there. Now watch this disguise lob. Stretches him out. That's good. Good defense. And the longer and longer this match goes, the more and more it sways towards Lendl's favor. Sampras, that's pretty good, 61% up at the net when you're a serving volleyer. Got him. 
Lendl tries the change. Lendl's percentage at the net is a little bit reminiscent of a pinch hitter in baseball that gets the bat twice a year, and he gets one hit, and he's batting 500. He comes to net so rarely, and this time he got burned. But he hit the ball behind Sampras again, thinking that he was going to take off. Sampras was just standing there waiting for it. That was not a tough shot at all. He had plenty of time. Tony, Tony Roach gave almost a little bit of nod to Yvonne there. Come on, just keep playing your tennis and things will come around your way. Tony, a great player in his own day. One of the best volleyers the One game has ever seen. One of the greatest backhand volleys I've ever seen. Oh. Or, or I've had the privilege to see. Shots just an inch off for Lendl have made a difference. That would have given him a break point. And that time, Sampras picked a much better shot to approach. That ball was way short compared to Lendl's normal depth. It was right at the service line, and he just came in and gave it a ride. And that's a tough shot to, uh, to pass on, even though Lendl did miss by an inch or two. The angled shot that Lennon's got to start for adding to the game, which at the same time stretches Sampras at the net, tires him out. It's kind of like the body punch. You keep the ball dipping down, and Laborg used to do that a lot. You know, he didn't always go for the big, big winner, even though he was capable of it. He liked to work you over a little bit at the net, too, make you stretch, you know, get those stomach muscles a little bit tired. Just the second break point of the match for Lendl. says how many lines can he hit well here's one that Sampras moves around on the forehand now watch him he's right in the center of the court here moves around hits the forehand right up the line tough shot to pick because when most players do that they go back to the backhand side seventh ace for Sampras Sounded like he mishit that ball. It looks like he may have broken the string. He puts the racket down. We'll see if stays with it. Well, he had a real fine shot there. Deuce at two all second set. This is almost reminiscent of what he did against Mooster. Again, he pulled out those big first serves at key times. 
But when you play a bass line or sometimes, and, and you're a servant volley, you know that you got to crank up your servant notch. And when you play a servant volley, or sometimes you prefer to, you know, keep it down a bit so you can get into the net, because generally the servant volleys don't return that well. Now Sampras saved a break point. But Vita Skerlite is his father, and uh, affectionately known as Mr. G. And you know, we know what Vitas was like as a tennis player, but what do you think he's like as a television announcer? Well, it's uh, to me it's something new because uh, usually I, I am working still full time, uh, working on, on full time basis, and uh, very rarely I hear uh, speaking him on television. But uh, as far as I heard from my friends and acquaintances, supposed to uh, supposed to that he's doing a very good job. Yeah, but didn't you just that's tell my me? My own opinion. That's uh, some other people just telling me. I don't know, Vitas. He told me that uh, I wouldn't have to be here if you were doing your job. <laughs> How do you like the tennis today? Yeah, oh, yes, I do. You see, years ago, I used to be in, uh, involved much more active when my son used to play. Then I go, used to go from court to court and uh, watch every player, what kind of style he's playing and uh, how good he's doing, because many of them used to play my son against my son. Uh, but these days, I can be relaxed and enjoy tennis much more. There you go. Now, Vitas, be careful. Your dad is watching. <laughs> That's great. Back to you guys. A proud papa. I can never see enough of my dad. Love him. <laughs> and I know he's enjoying the action out here today. <laughs> we well, definitely getting, have not been disappointed. No, well, Lendl is getting a test. Yep. Last year, Sampras had the big win over Vilander here, but in the fourth round, he lost rather easily to Jay Berger. And another year of maturation and a little stronger player. Things go into the memory bank, and he seems to be a kid that remembers matches that were important, where he did things that he would like to change. And uh, that's so important. That's part of being a champion. We, we've seen here the last eight days a lot of shots of parents and all that. Did, did your dad ever, during matches or after a match, let's say, when you got back, uh, say, hey, you should have done this or that, or was it not that kind of Actually, a... Actually, my dad never really was like that. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen parents yell at kids after matches, and, uh, you know, it almost makes me... I get mad when I see that, and I see a lot of that happening these days. And I thought he was pushy at the time, but all he did was bring me to the park to hit a few balls, you know. Uh, but, you know, born in Brooklyn, New York, it was either baseball, basketball, or football, not tennis. That was not because of the looked upon as a uh, macho sport in those days. Game then. Three all. Three all now in the second set. Well, we've had one break of serve in the match, and that gave Sampras the first set. This is kind of unusual. Both players now. Sampras over to work on his strings a little bit, and Lendl has gone for another racket. There's no change, and obviously not a ball change here. This is I thought I had the wrong yes, score because too. it's been a while since I've played. And, uh, <laughs> that is amazing. You don't know they're changing on even games now, did you? Uh, well, somebody once tried to tell me, and uh, and I was shocked when he did tell me that, but I, I finally realized that they haven't changed that rule. You do still switch on the odds. You know what? I was wrong about the ball change. Nine and seven. You're right. They've played 16 games. Lendl immediately changes rackets. I'm not always wrong. That just makes it even faster out here. Fairing Sampras. Oh, that is that, just solid. That's a solid stuff. volley. This is. A very good looking bunch of statistics on that second deal. There was 70% of Pete Sampras's first serves. That's a good shot what new balls also do for a good server. If he's in a groove and he's confident on the serve, which Pete Sampras definitely is, because we see him going for lines all the time, that new ball definitely increases the speed an extra 10 miles an hour.
Kentucky 15. Fifth double fault. That equals his entire match total against Tomas Luster. There's also something about taking a chance at 30 love, Ted. When you're up 30 love and you go for a second serve, it's a lot different than going for it at 30 all or let's say 15 all. Also, it's, a, it's also a little bit different serving to Thomas Muster, who stands 50 feet back behind the court, as serving to Yvonne Lindell, who has also maybe the greatest return in the game. Fall and Lendl has another break point. He's only now had three in the match. This young guy is playing the important points thus far today. He's playing them well. Watch the again serve and volley tactics. A couple of big strides and then Sampras well inside that service line. Joe Brandy watching. Dad. The coach that changed Sampras's game was Peter Fisher. No longer working with Sampras. I loved hearing Tracy Austin last night referred to him as Petey because they both played tennis at what was then the Jack Kramer Tennis Club out in Palos Verdes, California. Of course, uh, that is where Pete lives now. But uh, it was fun to hear Tracy talking about Sampras as a youngster over there at the club. Jack actually built that club years ago when we were all out playing the big towns like Texarkana and Des Moines, some of those places. has really got, gotten tough on this and Sampras has gotten in trouble Vetus when he hits cross court on the approach. I think his shot is down the line maybe nine out of ten times. Well it just gives you a little that little bit more angle to hit into the court. You've got that wide open down the line shot. Number one is down the line forehand is by far his favorite shot. And if Sampras happens to overcommit a little bit more to the middle then he's got that little dipping one cross court that you said he hit so well too. So Generally, approaching down the line is a much safer play. Well, he just, just spun that second one in. of the match and Sampras dodges another break point. <laughs> well this has been to this point a severe test for a guy that has played the best tennis of the 80s. That's such an interesting graphic there because as everybody knows the the big zero is where Yvonne wants to win so badly and this year he gave up playing in the French championships which he has won three times just to give himself every opportunity to win Wimbledon. It did not happen. 
We the saw team. earlier the number that I find more interesting than his earnings, 87 titles. Will he catch Connors at 109, who has the record? I think he's got a good chance, Ted, because I, I think Yvonne will play for at least another two or three years. And the thing about Lendl is when he that shows is. up at a tournament, he's out there in the finals or wins it a lot of times. There's a look at his titles. So many indoor championships. Interesting that he's won equally as many on clay and hard courts. And again, so few on grass. 49. But then there aren't many grass right. courts around this world anymore. You saw the note. He's lost only four points in this set on his serve. Slowly the match changing in the sense that Lendl is holding his serve more easily and Sampras is being challenged a bit more on his serve. second. Lendo hits a fine looking shot here because the approach that Sampras hits right here stays very low. Look how far down Lendo got. He got way down, bent the knees on that shot. Classic example of how to really get down. Lendo's got his own pair of shoes there. Name on it and all. It's great when he goes bowling. They'll never have any trouble finding it. <laughs> he gives, the, gives his bowling shoes back. I got a feeling whatever bowling alley he goes to, they're going to get his right shoes back. One thing that's very important in this game is that so far Lendl is 0 for 3 and break points. And it's today is not a day to be a slow starter against this kid. I mean, he's got to make him play those break points and make him play him hard. But again, that slow turn here in the second set, there's a little more pressure getting placed now on Sampras's service. And I think he's put it on himself. I think he's been spending more time, Barry, on the baseline in these last couple of games than he has in the previous two sets. Sampras asked if Cyclops was on. We were talking about coming in on the kitchen sink. It doesn't seem like the first two games of this set, he seems so aggressive. It seems a little bit of that aggression as the steam's come out of his game. And also, Venus, what's happened, I think, Lendl has started to get into the match more. He's returning better, and that last passing shot, we saw him get way down on there. Very tough shot, and so Lendl has definitely improved since that first set. second serve of Pete Sampras. He takes a big chance, caught Lendl moving to his left, and Yvonne has no play on that second serve. I like that. That's a lot of flair. And also not necessarily, and it points once again, not necessarily how hard you hit the ball, where you hit that ball. Lendl's forehand there, he gets ready. 
And this time he sets up, and he actually gives Pete Sampras a pretty good shot at the volley. It's just that second effort where he just barely got it over the net. Sampras was there, but, but attempted to make too fine of a volley. But it was the second effort of Yvonne Lendl that won that point. is guarding against that second serve out wide right now. Well, even though it's very early in the match, a break point here could change the complexion of it a whole lot. That's why. Sampras, solid first serve again. He doesn't seem to be affected by big points. He's, he's very, very calm on those big ones. Do you think Lendl, that was just a, a, a great serve, or Lendl just tried to play it a little bit too fine? I think a little of both, Vetus, but I, I thought the serve for a first serve at 30 40 break point was about as good as you can hit. But I definitely think Lendl could have made a little bit safer of a play and made the kid play the volley. I, I would have opted to be passed with a volley at that time than just make an error. Oh. Because we're very close to looking at two sets to love up for Sampras with a little bit of luck. Great return on the second serve. That one had some steam on it. <laughs> and eventually Lendl's going to start winning a break point. Well, we've seen this a million times before, that Lendl classic where he comes over it and just powers it up the line. Well, eventually, yes, but he's playing an explosive player. And uh, if these opportunities keep slipping by, this is a golden opportunity. This is where Lendl wants to be in. Break point, second serve. The fifth break point, Lendl finally wins one. Well, Vetus was a spoil sport at one time. Fourth round, 1981, a lifetime ago. The last time Lendl did not make it to the final. Maybe you call it a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Lendl now serving the even the match at a set apiece. Pete Sampras again. He has a chance at Love 30. And we'll find out a little bit about how Yvonne Lendl's feeling right now at Love 30. pressure right here. Watch it now. It's a good solid looking backhand but stays back as usual and Sampras gives him a lot of time on that forehand. It shows you how he feels at love 40. Beat 
guys. He was he was knew he was going to come in and went ahead and did it. Well, I'm with you 100 percent there, pal. Maybe it was a little bit tight. Didn't move his feet quite fast enough. But that's that was a play. I'd like to you know let him on try another one. Hey, he, he, he just missed one from that corner. Exactly. Loses a point to score 15-40. And the still... first thing Jimmy Connors said to me when I was on the tour, he said, listen, the great players are not going to hand you the match. you got to bring it to them. And I'd love 40. Definitely take a chance. And he did. Right on the baseline on the approach. And it's 5-all. Sampras way back now, keeps that ball in play. Now right here, sees his opportunity, goes in behind a solid forehand. Well, if anybody's going to give you the right points, it's Jimmy Connors. And he says if you got four, three chances to break, the first two you can really take a little bit extra there. And that time, Pete really put an extra lot of juice on it. He still had a 30-40 point to maybe play it a little bit safer. And he makes Lendl go for the passing shot. Oh, he overhits it. Thank you. Sampras winning the first set, and we're five all in the second. something about serving to his forehand but he's been mixing it up so you can't second guess yourself you know once you pick a spot you got to go for it little happen to hit a great forehand return it's unfortunate that uh, he lost the point although I told him to go to the backhand 119 miles an hour that is 11th ace likes to go for that forehand second serve 1530 big point to do it watch it one more time right down the center this is not going to show up because those they tell me the, the lines get wider everything widens out in the electronic replay awful tough to pick that one two break points Sampras now he really gets caught it's a good looking approach shot deep Lendl uncorks a great shot picks up the little half volley there it hits the top of the net and just drops over and that smile says it all I'll tell you after you win a point like that but he's got another one to win oh. I've never seen a player try to pick size of lines as, as close as this kid Pete Sampras. It's the biggest point of the match right here.
And Sampras has saved two break points. Little right where he likes to be on this last point. Well behind the baseline. Gets ready early. Hits the forehand. Pulls over it. Trying to keep that ball extra low. He didn't like it. Sampras has to feel like he's served 30 break points in the set. Sampras's temperature after that point. It does not get any better than this. Watch Sampras now. He gets caught. Looks like he's out of the point here. Somehow gets back in with a tremendous deep lob. Now look how far back he is. Stays in the point here. One more shot, but the incredible finisher here as he uncoils a forehand for a clean winner. It's coming up. There it is. But then Nets the approach volley. Ladies and gentlemen, please complete and quiet. another break point Thank you. for Lendl. The fourth in this game. And that is just a tough way to continue to play against somebody as good as Lendl. Well, the last one I think Lendl had a little bit to blame himself for. He had a pretty good overhead that should have been an easy put away. He has not been finishing off points. more emotion from Lendl thus far than you would expect in a match. Well, as Venus mentioned, Ted, he does not want to get down two sets to love, and I know that's got to be sneaking into his thinking a little bit here. And that approach shot was not really a great approach shot. First of all, it was an accidental shot by Lendl that hit it that short. He didn't mean to miss hit it. We said Lindell could have had the game on the smash. Sampras had it this time on his forehand, and he just tried to play it a little bit too fine. He knew the minute he hit that ball, it was going to yeah, be Yeah, that was, there. he didn't hit that right at all. His footwork was off, and he just, uh, he did the right thing. Just shrug it off, smile it off. Ooh. 
the 11th game of the second set turning out to be a gem. As a receiver here in San Francisco's case, does he, can he take some gambles in this game at 6-5, knowing I, he has a tie break? I, at this point, he should, Ted, because he's down 30 love. I mean, the chances are he's not going to win the game, so why not go for some right now? Get the game over with if he's going to lose it because the tie break is oh. coming up. Fourth double by Lendl. And you got to think that Lendl's a little bit concerned about Sampras's second return and then moving in behind it. He's going to try and do a little bit more with that serve, and it cost him that time. Tony Roach watching. done that much. He gets a double fault and then Lendl makes a fairly easy error there. Well, Sampras made two simple er errors in the beginning and we talked before that maybe he should try a little bit more just come in on anything and now he just stays back and kind of rallies and, and chips and, and now it's 30 all. Here he comes. From 30 love to set point Sampras. This crowd really into this match. Oh, Sampras going up the line. He rushed that shot just slightly, I think. As Lendl had made his move at net, the opening was there. Sideline. It's been line after line for Sampras. The ball definitely hit the sideline. You could see the way it took off. 
set point number two. like to have that one back. La palla si impenna sul nastro, finisce fuori, set point numero 3. Ha mandato uno sguardo in tribuna il povero Lendl. like he changed his mind he had moved way around the forehand well I think he was thinking of trying to scare him by moving way off maybe forcing a double fault but you're looking at a guy that's been in so many pressure positions here at the US Open I would have looked at the little chip make and him just play make him play it make him play it he has not made him play three break points Great games in a row. Both players, and he slices under this shot. Good deep shot. Lendl hits a better passing shot. Watch the reaction here as he slices under the ball. But again, he stays down to that ball so well. And you've led a very game competitor right back into this match. Sampras had every opportunity to have a two set to love lead. He didn't make Lendl play one single one of those break points. But he still has a chance. Tie break. Sam Although, let me tell you, Lindell feels a heck of a lot yeah. better now at 6-all. Well face. Sampras saved four break points in game 11. Lendl saved three set points in game 12. They both have a very good tiebreak record, so this should be one heck of a tiebreaker. They've had some experience playing tie breaks coming into this one. Would you say this crowd is pulling for Pete Sampras right now? No question about it. And also his demeanor on the court has really gotten the crowd in his favor. You know, he's always got a smile on his face, and if he does question the call, he does it in a way there's that it, it is just a little bit long and a little smile just keeps the crown on his face he's got a way of getting the people up on his side
That's what I meant before by instead of taking a couple big shots, Sampras should try to make Lindell make the volley. That was a very tentative, he cupped it, he didn't punch it, and that gave Sampras a second chance to hit the volley. Anytime Lindell comes into net, let him try to make the volley. That's his only weak link. Not only has Sampras served 12 aces, but a ton of service winners. And it's 3-1 in the tie break. saving his best serving here for the tie break. He has really served well so far. Watch the motion now right into this ball. A little extra oomph. He really got off the ground on that shot. will change ends at 4-2 Sampras. Seven points wins. You must win by two. Vitas, I think the other question is, if he has set points in this tiebreak, will he think back to those three that he didn't get in play and at least try and get the ball in play? The Lendl crew looking a little bit worried. You can't blame him for that. <laughs> Pete Sampras is on fire right now. And Wendell won the two points he had to on his racket. And it's 4-3 Sampras. Corking 111 miles an hour. That camp smells something good. serve. Very heavy second serve to the Lendl backhand. Well, it almost seemed like he couldn't come over it, Barry. If you want to put one big serving game together, he has done it in this tiebreak. Three set points for Pete Sampras. Oh.
for just the third time in his tennis career. Yvonne Lendl has lost the first two sets of a five-set match. In 1984 to McEnroe at the French, in 1981 at the Masters to Garolitis. In Ostrava, Czechoslovakia, this would cause some serious tremors. Mr. and Mrs. Lendl are here. Watch it now. Set point. Sampras has had him before. Good serve by Lendl. He barely gets his racket on this ball, and Lendl hits a smashing deep shot. Sampras on the full run, right up the line for a clean winner. Another good look at it. Just dives. Great effort by him to get that ball back. And this, he throws his whole body into that and actually gave a little body action to try to just hook it into the line. <laughs> 